hear that wind blowing in the background. Luckily, we can do even more with window functions to help us out. Enjoy the video. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we're gonna look at window boundaries. But first, let's do a quick recap on the last video. In that one, we did windows defined by value. And to help explain that, let's look at this example. We're currently on the road defined by the Arctic Ocean with its 14 million square kilometers of sea area. If I was looking for a window that's defined by 40 million square kilometers either side, then we can see by looking at the data, that's the range of rows we need to cover, and the window clause would have been range between 40 million preceding and 40 million following. As we move to different rows, the actual number of rows we span is different. So you can see here that for the Indian Ocean, we only pop up one row and one row below as well, as defined by the data. What that means is that when you have a window defined by value using the range clause, it means the number of rows that that window spans is variable. If the number of rows is variable, it also means the boundary, the extreme points of each window, are also variable and therefore are quite difficult to actually ascertain. And that's what today's lesson is about. So, how do we know where the boundaries are? We use first value and last value. Let's look at our requirement. Someone said, show me the life expectancy throughout the history of the UK compared to five years either side ASAP. Here's our raw data. And as you can see, back in the 1500s, people didn't live much longer than 30 years, all the way through to the last few years where the average life expectancy in the UK is now above 80 years old. Let's once again build up our template. We want to find some boundary information. When we see the word boundary, what we want is first value or last value. In this case, we're using first value by way of example. We're not partitioning the data by anything. We're sorting by the recorded year to define our window. And our window in clause was five years either side. So it will be range between a five year interval preceding and a five year interval following. Let's plug that into our SQL and see what we get. And there we can see this column called first val. What is that actually telling us? Let's look at the data. Let's pick a particular row, 2004. You can see there that its age value, life expectancy is 78.93, and it came up with a first value of 77.38. Well, how did it get that? First of all, let's look at the size of the window for that row. There's our window, five years before, five years following. We go back to get the first value, we look at the boundary of the window, which is 1999, and the value of age there, the life expectancy, was 77.38, and that is the result of our first value. That's how the first value works. It picks the value associated with the boundary of the window. Let's now do the same thing for last value. It's the same process as well. We have another column here, I've included it along with first value. We look at 2004 and the size of our window again, the boundary of the window in last is 2009. That gives us a life expectancy of 80.18, and that's what we get for our last value. So you can start to see now how first and last value work. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, isn't that just the same as min and max? No, it's not. Let's look a bit more closely. A window boundary is not the same as max and min. Let's prove it. Here is the first value query we saw before, and just using standard min for the exact same window size, five years either side. You can see that for 1980, there's actually a difference between the two. Why is that the case? Here's a visual. Let's say we're on a particular row, and we've defined some sort of window, which gives us a span of rows a good deal behind and a number of rows in front. What first value is, is the value in question at the boundary of the window. It doesn't matter whether that value is high or low, it is the boundary of the window, not the boundary of the values. And similarly, last value is the last value as defined by the boundary of the window. When we talk about min and max within a window, what we're doing is, is considering all the rows in the window and then scanning effectively through all of them to find out what the lowest value is. So it could have been anywhere in that window, the min value could have been there. It's unrelated to first and last value, which are defined purely by the boundary of the window. Let's look at all the differences between min and first value. Can we do it? Here's the previous query, which shows first value and the min for the same window. How do we do predicates and analytics? Well, we wrap them in an inline view. So we wrap it in an inline view where first value does not equal min value. That's a jump back to one of the earlier videos on how to do predicates. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the link below. In the next session, we'll continue exploring windows and look at how powerful they are. 
Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.